button for more educative content the patient instrument clinician preparation now what this entails is that for you to have an excellent um, test on whatever thing you're doing with the slit lamp by microscopy as a clinician you need to set yourself you need to set the instrument and then you need to set your patient now the first thing to take note of in your consulting room is that you should have wheelless seats the seat for you and the patient, it should be wheelless seat. As you can see, this seat it has no wheels. Now, the reason for wheelless seat is to enhance stability and avoid mobility or movement of patient or clinician. Now, after the wheelless seat, next is now your patient preparation. How do you prepare your patient? So, I'm going to be using someone to demonstrate to you on how you prepare your patient. Please, you can have the seat. You're welcome. Now, this is Dr. Sylvia. She's going to be serving as my patient for me to demonstrate the patient preparation during your slit lamp by microscopy. Now, the first thing you need to do is that you need to educate your patient on what you want to do. Remember, your patients are not robots. So, tell them what you want to do. This helps the patients to flow with you. There are certain instructions you need to give to them. So, this is going to guide them enable them to cooperate with you during your test. After educating your patient on what you want to do, the next thing you need to do is to sanitize where the patient's skin or body is going to have contact with your, your instrument. Now, here is the forehead rest for proper placement of the, of the patient's forehead. And this is the chin rest for proper placement of the patient's chin. So for, the, for this test, your patient's forehead is going to be resting here. And the patient's chin is going to be resting here. And some cases, like children, their hand is going to be resting on this hand rest. So this part that will have contact with the patient, please, with a spirit, you need to sanitize those places. In front of the patient, please do not sanitize the instrument outside the patient's presence. Please do this in front of your patient in the consulting room. Now, so I'm going to be sanitizing the chin rest, the forehead rest, and the hand rest. Remember, please do not use a cloth. You have to, like here now, I'm using a wipes or a tissue because I need to dispose it after each patient use. So you take your spirit. I'm taking my spirit. So I've taken the spirit. This is the chin rest, so I need to gently clean up the chin rest. As the patient is looking at you, you have to gently clean the forehead rest. Remember, in front of your patient, this helps to boost their confidence in you. So it's not just that they came for an eye test, but their general health matters a lot to you as an eye doctor. The next thing is now the hand rest. You have to gently clean up the hand rest. You have to gently clean the hand rest. So that is all for sanitizing of the forehead rest, the chin rest, and the hand rest. The next thing is your patient is now going to rest the forehead, the chin. Good. You can see it. The patient's chin is well resting and her forehead should be touching. Please, you have to take note of this from the beginning to the end of your test. The patient's forehead must be touching the forehead rest and the chin must rest like this. Next is you now have to align, look at this cantus marker. Please, you can see this. We call this the cantus marker. This is a cantus alignment marker. 
so the function of this cantus alignment marker is to help you make sure that the patient's temporal cantus is aligned with this line and how do i achieve that i have to use the chin rest adjustment knob you can see i'm taking her chin up or i can be taking it down until the temporal cantus of the patient is well aligned with this cantus alignment marker that is achieved the next thing is you have to look at your patient is the back of the patient straight because you we don't want your patient to be arcing see look at me i don't want your patient to sit like this on the slip down look at you don't want your patient to be like this patients should not be stretching their neck patients back should not be arcing it shouldn't be bent like this so in order to prevent arcing of the patient that is where you now need your table adjustment lava this is a table adjustment lava which serves to take the patient downward or upward so for this my patient i'm taking the table lava upward making sure she's not arcing so this is how your patient should be properly set for your slit lamp by microscopy please you or your patient should not rest your hand on top of the table like this neither should you match the slip lamp by microscopy table so that is all for the patient preparation next is now the instrument preparation the instrument itself you're going to use for your practical you need to prepare the instrument in the instrument preparation the first thing you need to note is that the real start this is the real start here this real start controls the intensity of the light this is what increases or decreases the intensity of the light so make sure the real start button is at the lowest form after the real start the next thing you need to do is to set your joystick at a mid range of vertical travel this is the joystick here now setting it at the mid range of vertical travel means i should take this this slit lamp by microscope upward and how do i do that i'm going to be counting because you know this is a learning class so the easiest way you can achieve the mid range of vertical travel is by taking the joystick in the vertical range by counting till you exhaust it to the highest so let's go this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten this is ten so ten is the highest i now have to take it to the midway which is five so i'm going to count again one two three four five so where i've kept this joystick now is the midway of upward and downward motion of the slip lamp by microscope and the reason for this is during my test or during my examination of the patient eye there would be need for me to go more upwards or go downwards to examine some structures of the eye so at this mid range of vertical travel i have an allowance to move upward and then to move downwards to have a gross examination of whatever thing i'm looking on this patient's eye after the joystick now you now have to take a look at all the parameters on the instrument let's start with the slit height this is the slit height calibrated scale on this slit height calibrated scale the highest for this instrument is 12. So, I have to keep it at 12. You just keep it at the highest of your instrument. After the slit height calibrated scale, the next thing is now the filters. And this is the filter selection knob. Remember, we had discussed about all these filters. So, you have to make sure that the filter selection knob is positioned on the unfiltered filter or the normal filter. The, what, what I call the normal filter here, this is the normal halogen light that comes from this illumination system. After that, the next thing is the slit axis rotator. This slit axis rotator, make sure it is placed at 90 degrees. There's a click stop to it. So make sure it is at 90 degrees. The reason for being at 90 degrees is that this is what helps your slit to have the, the, the angle, like to be straight at 90 degrees. If this is not at 90 degrees, it's going to cause your slit to tilt. So make sure the slit axis rotator is at 90 degrees. Now, the diffuser should be out of place. This is the diffuser. It should be out of place. 
The next thing is your sclerotis scatter knob. The sclerotis scatter knob should be locked. Next is your decentration lash. Because we are not doing fundoscopy, neither are we doing any procedure yet. We are just setting up the instrument. So, please do not leave the decentration lash like this. Do not make it to tilt the illumination system. Make sure your decentration lash is normal. The next is now the slit width adjustment knob. Remember, I said this is what increases or decreases the width of the slit. So, make sure your slit width adjustment knob is at the highest. Here, my slit width is the highest is 12. So, I've placed it at 12. You should place it on the highest for your instrument. After that, the angle here, the angle should be at zero. The angle here now is, is at zero. So, this is all for the instrument preparation. So, it simply means now you have set the instrument at what? Just the normal the normal position it should be for you to take off your illumination techniques. Next is now the clinician preparation. For the clinician preparation, the first thing you have to do is that you need to compensate for your refractive status. The reason for this is that if you watch, look at this adjustable eyepiece. Can you see this adjustable eyepiece? Now, this eyepiece, we have inside it inbuilt auxiliary lenses of 10 diopters or more now when i talked about the parts of the observation system i said this inbuilt lenses helps the clinician to compensate for his or her refractive status yes manufacturers of slit lamp they have this high iq knowing that different persons are going to be using the slit lamp by microscope and as such they would have different refractive status because some persons might be emetropic why some might be ametropic. So, if you're ametropic or ametropic, you can use the slit lamp by microscopy effectively and see things what clear. How do I compensate for my refractive status? First, you turn on the slit lamp by microscope. Now, the slit lamp by microscope is on. As I put on the slit lamp by microscope, you need to look through the by microscope. At this point, you might not see anything like now i can't see anything i'm just seeing like an orange red just a little orange glow now something is going to guide me all you need to do is look through the slit lamp by microscope hold your joystick with your right hand if you're left-handed hold your joystick with your left hand because the joystick serves as your steering wheel now you need to get a focal point focal point is a point of clarity and that is achieved by moving your slit lamp by microscopy closer to the patient's face. You're going to move this slit lamp by microscope close to the patient's nose bridge or closed eyelid. Please do not focus it on the patient's open eye. You're going to use the patient's closed eyelid. The eyelashes is going to give you a guide or the patient's nose bridge. So here now I'm going to use the patient's nose bridge. So let's go. So, move the slit lamp by microscope. Keep moving close. Keep moving close as you're looking through the by microscope. Keep moving close. Keep moving close. Until the point you can see the pores on the patient's skin. I'm moving this close now to the patient's nose bridge. I'm using the patient's nose bridge as a guide. Good. Keep moving. Sometimes you might be moving and you pass the focal point. What you need to do is to come back again. So I'm going to do it again for you. I just turned on the slit lamp by microscope and you can see where the slit lamp by microscope is on the table. When you look through the by microscope, I can't see anything. I'm just seeing a little orange glow of the light. But I need to get a focal point to enable me to compensate for my refractive status. So what I need to do is start moving the slit lamp by microscope forward to the patient's nose bridge or closed eyelid. So I'm going to be using her nose bridge here. So I keep moving the instrument. Gradually keep moving the slit lamp by microscopy closed. Can't gradually keep moving it. Gradually keep moving it to the patient's nose bridge until you can see the pores on her skin. Now let's take a look at the look at the system there, the computer. Can you see this? This is what we call a focal point, a point of clarity. If you watch on this computer. Looking at the screen, you can see 
those pores on the skin are visible. Unlike when I put this instrument backward, look at at this point. Look at the look at the, the system. Nothing is clear there. But as I gradually move this instrument, the slit lamp by microscope closer, I'm moving it closer to the patient's nose bridge. You can see at a point it got sharp. Now, when it gets sharp like this, please do not stop here. Keep on pushing closer, keep on moving forward. What happens? Everything is blurry. That means I have passed the focal point. I need to get backward again. At this point, this is what we call the focal point, which is a point of clarity. The focal point is now the takeoff point for your compensation of refractive error. The next thing is, you now look through the bi microscope with your left eye looking through the left eye. Is, some persons don't really know how to suppress the eye, so they prefer to close the eye. So, if I want to compensate for my refractive error for the left eye, you have to make sure you are maintaining this focal point, this point of clarity of those pores on the skin. Your right hand, your right hand should hold the, the joystick. Close the left, close the right eye. So your left eye is looking through the left eyepiece. Your left hand should be on this left eyepiece. Now you're focusing on the pores. You have to rotate this eyepiece. See what I'm doing? Gradually rotate this eyepiece, gradually, until you get the clearest or sharpest point of those pores on, her, on the skin. That is on her nose bridge. Right now, the pores are very visible. They are distinct. They are sharp. The next you do with the same for the right eye. So to compensate your refractive error for the right eye, make sure the focal point is still maintained. Close the left eye. You look through the right eyepiece with your right eye. With your right hand on the right eyepiece, you still have to rotate the eyepiece. Keep rotating the eyepiece until you see the pores. They are sharp and distant on the nose bridge. Right now, they are sharp. They are visible. They are distant. Now, monocularly, I have compensated for the refractive error of the right eye and the left eye. But something is remaining. That is to attain a single binocular vision. So, to attain a single binocular vision, it simply means that you want the right eye and the left eye to see the two images as one. That means the both of them, they are supposed to do what fuse. Now, you need to converge the eyepiece. Converging this eyepiece, it depends on your interpupillary distance. Some persons' interpupillary distance could be wider, while some persons can have a small interpupillary distance. All you need to do is, this adjustable eyepiece, look through with your two eyes, left eye looking through the left eyepiece, right eye looking through the right eyepiece, then converge this adjustable eyepiece. You see what I'm doing? Gradually keep moving them until your two eyes can see one single binocular vision. So for me at this point, my two eyes looking through, I can just see one single image. This is all about compensating for the clinician's refractive status. Now you gradually pull back the instrument, reduce the real start to the lowest, and you lock the slip lamp by a microscope. Remember, you the clinician, you should also be comfortably seated as I'm sitting with your back straight. Make sure your back is not aching. So both the clinician and the patient the back should be as straight as possible and both sitting comfortably for the practical. So, after this, the next thing is now, yes, let I forget something, please. The wheels, the table wheels, make sure you lock the table wheels. You can see this is the table wheels. So, make sure before you start your practical, I have locked this, you also lock the other one. This is to enhance stability of the table. At this point, you can see this table cannot move again. So you make sure everything you need to put in order to maintain stability, the seat, the table wheels, they are all done. So that is all for the clinician patient instrument preparation in slit lamp by microscopy. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit the notification button for more educative videos. Thank you.